All right. Yeah. I don't have a. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, I will call the regular meeting of the Economic Development Authority to order. Um, do I do? Do I have to do the the read the dealy? No. Again, Kelly. Not. No, we're good, right? Yeah. All right. Um, could I have roll call, please? Siskins. Here. Novitsky. Here. Marquez Samuel. Not present. Terringer. Oh, uh, here. Sir. Here. Mersion. Jacobs. Here. We have a flag, so we will honor our flags. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They must have heard me when I said yeah. last time. <laughs> There's no flag down here. <laughs> okay. Um, We'll move to the consent agenda, which includes approval of the executive session minutes of February 1st, 2021, and the regular minutes from May 3rd. Also approval of the financial report and payment of the bills. Um, are there any questions? Jerry. <laughs> no, well, the, the new format, when you roll that page like over, that? yeah, and then you side by side, yeah. you can understand you like what we're talking format? about. Yeah, I, I like that okay. very much. And and I guess I don't have any, I could just, it's the normal kind of stuff, a lot of lot of legal fees, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. So. Well, that's what's going on right now. Isn't it? So, no, I have no other questions. Okay. Um, also, are there any questions or additions to either of the two meetings, their minutes? Everybody's okay. All right, then I will entertain a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Second. So, uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't have to do a roll call, do I, every time now? No, since there's no one, uh, no member of PDA present via Zoom. Got it. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. All right, our business items, number of Number one, or it'd be number three, 4300 Central Avenue, establishment of the Alatus Tax Increment Financing District. You are on. Awesome. Thank you. Happily on for this, uh, <laughs> Madam Chair. This is the first round of development project approvals related to the redevelopment of 4300 Central Avenue uh, in partnership with Alatus. This is the most commonly known as the Hy-Vee site, of course. And tonight we will be reviewing uh, the steps that we need to take uh, as the EDA for the tax increment financing component of the project, as well as an element related to the bonds that the city anticipates issuing um, for the purchase and some of the pre-development work on the site. So the first order of business is uh, items related to the establishment of the TIF district for this project. And just a little bit of background. So Alatus, as we know, has requested that the city um, assist in this project with, with public financing in the form of uh, tax increment financing. And we've got a, the base elements of the project established, subject to change as we move through this. But right now, again, four to 600 multifamily units, uh, up to 80,000 square feet of retail and commercial space. Uh, beneath the multifamily. Uh, grocery stores and anchor tenant is what they're planning for right now. Underground parking, a public park, and a single family subdivision on the west end of the site. So right now, the first order of business, and we have to do this in sequence that's outlined in your report, but would be um, to... I, oh, I would sorry. to interfere. Yep. Um, could you tell me what page it's on in here? We have yeah. minutes that are in between before we get to um, where number three is. Is it on page, page 26? 26. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I'd like to follow. Along. No, that sounds great. So before we move to establish a TIF district that would encompass the new project proposed by Lattice, we've got housekeeping related to the underlying district that was approved for High V in 2016. That district was entitled the Central Value Center TIF District, and there's a TIF agreement or contract for redevelopment that was associated with that. So we need to terminate that agreement and decertify the underlying district before we can move through the process to establish a new district. A new district 
is required in this place, um, first we have to terminate that contract. And then secondly, the parameters of the, the project have changed significantly uh, to the point where the project proposed by Lattice includes eligible TIF costs that exceeded those that were part of the high V development. <laughs> so that's the first step, decertify, kind of clean, clear the slate to make room for the new project. Um, and then, so a bit of background on the, uh, the new district that Aladdis is seeking. Details are preliminary. Um, right now, the EDA, our staff are working with Ellers Public Finance and Kennedy and Graven, um, our redevelopment council, uh, to move through the process and create the contracts that are necessary for this. But um, we know the eligible costs are the typical in this project, land and building acquisition, public improvements, utilities, and the demolition of the, the existing buildings um, would make this a redevelopment district. So uh, the EDA does have the tax increment financing powers, but um, also the council has to review and approve this at a later date. Right now, the council is scheduled for a public hearing on June 14th to take up the very same items that the EDA is going through uh, in an identical sequence. Um, and they will review that plan at that time at a public hearing. So the districts in the city, previously the EDA uh, and council established a redevelopment project designated as the Downtown Central Business District Revitalization Plan. And that was uh, designed to encourage development and redevelopment along Central Avenue. Modifications to that base plan, which is everything within that district, require the new TIF district. And that's the plan that's before you. Uh, tonight. So it reflects maximum potentials for the proposed project, uh, does not constitute terms, length, or dollar amount. That's all being vetted, um, negotiated, understood in greater detail as we move through the process. This is just the first step. We've, all of those things, the, the actual details will be memorialized in the contract for private redevelopment at a later date. So this is broad term, broad scope, what we know is going into the project, what is the hypothetical max amount of uh, increment that could be generated, and that's the plan that, that we're looking to approve. Again, the project components are embodied in the TIF plan that was attached to your report. Um, and the second half of the approval, so we decertify, we move to establish the new district, and then finally in this uh, item before you, we are seeking to establish an interfund loan. So there's certain administrative costs that we incur related to the creation of this district. And those costs are eligible to be reimbursed with tax increments that are generated by the district once it's up and running. Uh, to ensure repayment of those costs, uh, the EDA does need to establish an interfund loan for this project. And then the EDA can tempor temporarily finance these admin costs. Um, Right now, that recommended loan amount that's in your packet is $25,000. So to recap, we've got three items for consideration with this, this one agenda item. It's a resolution that would approve the termination of the redevelopment contract with hy V and the decertification of that underlying TIF district. The second resolution would be a resolution that modifies the downtown revitalization plan and establishes the um, the Aladdis TIF district and, and that TIF plan is approved that, that we've discussed. And then finally, a resolution that authorizes the interfund loan uh, for the EDA to be reimbursed for these expenses at a later date. And we need to do it in the order in the packet, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. We also have uh, Chris Osmondson from Aladdis that's joined us this evening. And then Martha Ingram is on Zoom, our redevelopment um, Council for this project for uh, more technical legal questions. Just one question: when um, when we established the when we established the TIP district for um, for High V, um, did we have costs involved in doing that, or was it mostly okay? So we have we lost that. Yeah. So. That that would have functioned like any other, where we take a deposit on the front end for those first group of costs for Ellers, public finance, um, for Kennedy and Graven. 
I don't have the full accounting with me yeah. this evening, okay. but we should have been reimbursed for all of those costs. I can work with Joe okay. to, to ensure that. But before we begin expending costs, we do collect $10,000 uh, for these first um, core group of costs. And we can reinvigorate uh, that account you know, by asking for further deposits. Um, this loan that we're contemplating, I believe, Martha, you might be able to correct me, but we could pay for any of those costs that would be in that preliminary development phase as well out of uh, the interfund loan construct. It's kind of two, two different um, con contracts that we have to, to establish a way to reimburse ourselves. That's correct. Um, you, you have the choice of either um, requiring an escrow from the developer um, to pay any preliminary costs that the EDA has before TIF starts to flow and, you be, and you're able to reimburse yourselves from your administrative tax increment. Um, or alternatively, you do the interfund loan and you pay for it out of the EDA's own pocket and then reimburse yourselves from the increment. Um, as a general rule, we like to uh, recommend that you get the escrow from the developer because it doesn't um, you know, make you have to pay anything out of pocket. So two layers of protection for right, but we're not we're not out any money from that uh, that deal that we were striking with High V. We're we're not out any funding, are we? We shouldn't be. Before I commit to saying yes, I would want to review. You want to find out? That, I'm, okay. That was 2016. It's always good to wrap up yeah. one's. You're right. Entanglements I, with one place before you start tangling up with something else. The contracts would be the same. We were working with Ellers and Kennedy and Graven, and I just have not gone through the accounting of okay. that to make sure um, we haven't incurred costs for quite some time okay. on that project. No, I didn't think so. I mean, it, it was basically a, a, dead, a dead project, but my feeling was, okay, I saw the $25,000 on here, and that's what made me think, did we have a similar thing where we um, had money put in by the city or the EDA, the EDA in this, in this case, into that project and did we get it back? And I just wanna make sure that we do get okay. it back. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions from the commissioners? Okay, um, the recommendations are on page 27 and we'll go through each one, whoever would like to do it. Move to waive the reading of resolution 2021-08. There will be an ample copies available to the public. Second. A motion has been made unseconded that we waive the reading. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Move to adopt resolution 2021-08, <clears throat> a resolution approving termination of contract for private redevelopment and decertification of Central Valley Center tax increment financing district. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt resolution 2021-08. All those in all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next motion. Move to <clears throat> waive the reading of resolution 2021-09. There being ample copies available to the public. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to waive the reading. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next one. Move to adopt resolution 2021-09, a resolution adopting a modification to the downtown central business district revitalization plan for the downtown central business redevelopment project, establishing the a lattice TIF district therein and adopting a tax increment financing plan, therefore. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt this resolution. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next. Move to waive the reading of resolution 2021-10. There being one copy available to the public. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to waive the reading of the resolution. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next motion. Move to adopt resolution 2021-10, resolution authorizing an interfund loan for, for advance of certain costs in connection with the Aladdis TIF district. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. 
Okay, so. Um, Page 55. Thank you. No problem. Are we on to number four yet? Yes, the, we the are. 4,300, okay, yeah. the pledge of, for general obligation. All right, and we're on page 55? Correct. Right. I should put little thingies on the corner when I read this and I know where they are. Okay, dope. Um, the item is 4,300 Central Avenue, TIF pledge for general obligation, TIF revenue bonds. Thank you, Madam Chair. So in addition to tax increment financing for the project, um, staff have been directed by uh, the council and the EDA to work with the developer on a request for the funding necessary to purchase the property from Hy-Vee and provide funding for some of the pre-development costs related uh, to environmental testing, demolition, and demolition of the existing buildings. That total amount has been rounded to $6 million. The uses are outlined in your report, but uh, generally we can go through them. Land acquisition is four and a half million. Property taxes for three years, which is the term of the, the, the bonds that we're contemplating is a temporary bond issuance of three years that can be re renewed for an additional three for a total of six. But this reflects property taxes for three years. Uh, closing costs of 105,000. City fees of 50,000. The demolition of 671,000. Environmental testing and reports, 42,000, and then geotechnical testing and related reports of 35,000. Um, that's just under 6 million. So rounding up is the suggested approach to provide for a, a buffer within these eligible uses that we're contemplating. Um, during an executive session on February 1st of this year, the EDA did discuss this project and explored uh, the public funding options that were available to the EDA and, and city with two primary options being reviewed, internal funds or uh, development funds pooled from across the city's various uh, existing cash resources or borrowing through the issuance of general obligation tax increment financing or TIF bonds. Following that discussion of those options, the EDA did direct staff to move forward with the borrowing option and take the steps necessary to issue the TIF bonds uh, to fund the acquisition and pre-development costs. Under this scenario, the city issues the debt necessary for Lattice to purchase the property from hy acting as interim lender, and then a Lattice would pay off the city's loan when the project is ready to close with permanent financing. Um, since that February meeting, staff has worked with uh, Ellers and Kennedy and Graven to prepare for the bond sale. And that sale is scheduled for July 12th of this year. Uh, and although the city has the authority to issue the GO TIF bonds, the EDA administers TIF districts. So the county remits increment that's generated from any TIF district directly to the EDA and not the city. So because of this arrangement, these are TIF bonds. We're pledging potential TIF revenue increment to the payment of these bonds the EDA has to agree uh, to pledge those EDA funds to the city for the city issued bonds. Um, I hope I'm simplifying that as, uh, as easily as we can. And the formal way to do that is through a TIF pledge agreement that's been drafted by Kennedy and Graven. There aren't, we're, we're contemplating a transaction and scenario where this doesn't come into play, but it's a requisite of the bond issuance that the EDA makes this pledge. So the plan is that we work with the Lattice to close on this project and they pay us back before the three-year term uh, would ever expire and there would be no debt service or any payments made because they're um, deferred payment. Uh, they are interest bearing, but we, for three years, there are no payments that are made on the bonds. Um, if we don't close, we have other options within that time frame. We can extend um, and, and renew the temporary bonds for another three years and, and find time to, to further, the, further refine the project. But it's anticipated that this um, arrangement would, would not have to take place. Um, but again, is a formality in planning for and, and a, a requirement uh, by law that we have this formal agreement. Do we have a closing date arranged yet? So we're zeroing in on a end of July purchase from Hy-Vee. So okay. 
we issue the bonds on the 12th of July and then are trying to close the purchase of a lattice from High V at that time by the end of July. And then from there to close on the permanent financing for the project, we're, we're trying to be in the ground next year with phase one of this, um, yeah. but um, we have a lot of things to work through and we, we've got a lot more time uh, to work through any of those issues that we might encounter, but um, ideally we can get a lattice to get their permanent financing some, at some point next year okay. Um, okay. and then fully repay. While they're, I can ask this. What is your yeah. name again? I'm sorry. Chris Osmondson. Chris. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, when you're work, you're going to do the the part that is on Central Avenue first, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. So while that is going on, will the I think there's only two businesses left down there, isn't right. there? Yep. Will they remain in 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 working order? Will they be doing business yep. until um, that's completed? The um the the retail and the yeah and the so it's it's a little nuanced but the two leases uh, the dollar store uh, I believe is through August of 2023 okay um, that's that's when their effective lease and and, it, and then they can uh, amic you know then we are able to part ways amicably um, Fratelloni's is in there actually considerably longer i want to say until 2028 mm. um and it, that's that's fine it's actually a really good business and i think we're going to see if there's a way to potentially swap locations and possibly include them okay. in the future okay. retail but that's that's so far out there yeah. that oh, yeah. we're not sure yeah. but we, well, we i do hope they it. do because yeah. they're a wonderful people to do business with yep and, and they I would hate to see them leave yeah and so they I, we're going to try to figure out a way to incorporate that, but there are a few existing encumbrances that we're going to yeah. go around. Yeah. However, the the building is there's about six hundred thousand dollars of demolition mm -hmm. in this cost, and that's really for the the rainbow portion. There's yeah. a structural load bearing wall. We can remove that, and then we'll kind of build around it. We need to give them some accessibility, mm -hmm. um, but like, it'll be a little bit. It'll be phased around that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we've already tried to figure out how to how to do that. Do you also expect to be applying for some um, grant money to deal with what's in the ground in there? In yeah, the yeah, absolutely. So I would expect we will. It sort of depends on how the project comes together, which funds we would go in for. But you probably have the opportunity to go in for transit-oriented development funds with the uh, bus lines that are along Central, and then there's probably two or three. Uh, Minnesota deed grants that we could go in for for uh, either stormwater retention, just sort of relocation, but then also cleanup and then even enhancements. So there's there's all kinds of different okay. programs okay. that we can look at. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so to Aaron's point, we've we just kicked off last week the first environmental studies. We have to do a larger one because mm -hmm. of the scope of the site it's called the eaw an environmental assessment worksheet that's pretty much the first kind of we have about three months that we have to work through that that will be coming through the city because we commission and then uh, the city of columbia heights as the registered governmental unit will mm -hmm. run that process mm -hmm. but that's really our first critical path so in terms of the closing date um we've got at least four months because of that sort of public private process that we'll have to get out there. But I do think kind of beginning, you know, Q, Q1, hopefully, you know, January or February, we can work through at least kind of the first phase and start paying down the, the bonds with the closing and then just keep it rolling there. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. What, Jerry? What, what, what risks does the city have in this whole deal? Right. I mean, what, what, what's our, what's our exposure here? Absolutely not. No, um, that's a really good question. So, yeah, we got through it though. So, um, <laughs> little bruise, most definitely. And I will likely lean in on Martha because we prepped this conversation, but it gets a little nuanced on some of the if thens. So, if Lattice fails to close, um, we the land is collateral, and we would take that back as lender. It's staff's opinion that that is 
the right move because it's such a pivotal site for the community with, with so much opportunity and the acquisition cost is manageable. We could extend the bonds as a city for another three years if Lattice fell out in the first three year period. I think we would maintain obviously working with them until we couldn't find a workable solution. But that's one default option, um, getting the property back and figuring out a new development partner, um, hopefully within six years. Otherwise we can roll the bonds into permanent. So from temporary to permanent, and then have to find a way to pay for the debt service on those um, ourselves or use cash reserves at that point to just pay for the land. If a lattice pulls out, it, it would likely be in a scenario where the pre-development costs hadn't been fully expended as well, where you're just accounting for like not demolition of half the buildings, not all of the environmental cleanup, just the acquisition. Um, so that would be the a smaller than six million dollar cash uh, exposure for the city and the EDA in this case. But um, Martha, any other um, default scenarios you want to add light to? No, I think you covered it pretty well. the The worst case scenario is that Aladdis purchases the property and maybe even gets as far as expending the other costs, and then for whatever reason is unable to close on permanent financing and pay the city back. Um, and in that scenario, the uh, city will have a mortgage as security for the bonds and will be able to foreclose on that mortgage and get the property back. So you will still have the bonds outstanding in that scenario, but you will also have a piece of property worth a considerable amount of money and most likely other interested developers who would be able to step in and build something that would generate the increment needed to be able to pay those bonds off um, over a longer term. You know, uh, it's such an innovative project. I mean, I really, I mean, it really looks great to me uh, on paper. Um, but, you know, it, it's, to me, it's kind of a high risk deal. Um, and, um, and I, I'm really concerned that when it comes right down to it, when, when they start talking about the costs that are going to be employed in, in trying to construct this thing, that they may just not want to proceed. And so I'm, I hope that's not the case because I think this would be a great, great project, but, but I'm just a little, I'm a doubting Thomas here a little bit, okay? Just on the record. Yeah, I can definitely respect that. It is. Another very bold move. I think we're relying on a trusted partner in this case that got us through a, and an innovative the project. First, the first time around, we got through in spite of the cell towers right. and all the monkey business. But, <clears throat> but I just, I'm just a little bit gun shy with this because it's, it's such a, such an innovative thing. And, um, and, uh, but I hope I'm wrong, and I probably am. So okay. We'll do everything we can. <laughs> but I, I do, I, I will say, I think the the risk with kind of the current macroeconomic environment we're in, and then also the fact that this is a designated federal opportunity zone is, um, I, I think there's going to be some, uh, the Biden administration is probably going to make some substantial changes to the tax code that are going to change the way real estate investment looks. And so, at the end of the day, um, that parcel of land, whomever owns it, is probably going to be worth considerably more than what we're, we're talking about right now. So I think from a risk mitigation standpoint, um, we're going to get it done. But if something blows up in your face, I think you do end up having actually something that's worth probably twice as much uh, at the end of the day, um, because there's only so many designated federal opportunity zones in the country that are actually in, uh, I would say, kind of urban, suburban spaces. Uh, a lot of them are in, you know, counties and populations where the investment's not going to happen. So probably 25% of them are feasible from a development perspective, and the other 75% are um, a little bit pie in the sky. This happens to be one of the 25%. What does the Opportunity Zone do for you? Uh, it doesn't do anything for me, uh, except so essentially it's uh, 
it is a way for investors to ultimately realize a, a tax-free opportunity um, with respects to their investments. So very simply, if an investor makes an investment, which is, it's not us, we're just sort of the developer. So we go out and find the investor. But if that investor makes an investment and their dollars stay in for 10 years, um, at the end of that 10 years, they receive whatever their windfall is and they don't pay taxes on it. That's essentially the, the case. Um, and with the modifications or the proposed modifications to the 1031 exchange program, um, I think they're looking at the possibly changing the corporate tax rate levies. And then I think there's now this 15% global tax rate. Um, there's just a lot more focus on where can you do feasible federal opportunity zone projects. So um, for, for good or bad, however the budgeting is with the federal economy, I don't care, uh, but, um, but these, these sites are becoming fewer and far between. Yeah. I think from a community development perspective, we have to at least discuss what are the alternatives? You know, what, if the EDA doesn't drive or city and EDA don't drive development on this site for a vision beyond what's currently there, what could happen? Um, because the price of entry right now is pretty low and we could be stuck with, uh, you know, the existing conditions and no high V for a very long time. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that kind of pushed me a little bit on the uh, existing conditions, I mean, we're thinking that it's going to be worth more money, but I know what went into that area when they built it, because I was here and I saw it. I mean, when they mm -hmm. built uh, Grand Central, and I, I, there could be some conditions there that could, could blow these costs up and, you know, pretty tough. Are you, I hope not, you mean soil conditions, environmental, environmental, environmental soil, and, 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 uh, soil and conditions? Soil, yeah, yeah but see, that's my fear is the soil conditions. There's a lot of increment in this scope of project to overcome some pretty significant pre development costs in consultation with Ellers. Max seen out the calculations in the plan, it, it's somewhere around $27 million. So we can fix a lot of underlying issues. I, it's not projected to ever reach that limit, but um, there's the other utility infrastructure issues that the city can now fix as part of this, that it will take a project of this magnitude to fix those issues for everyone's sake. So, um, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Anyone, anyone? Yes, Karen? Is this just the same? Um, is this is the same or similar arrangement to the 40th and Central? Okay, so what we're talking about right now is not, and that's a really good question. So, the city in this case is also, in addition to the tax and financing, contemplating issuing debt with TIF revenue pledged to pay that debt. So, TIF to pay for qualified development costs, and then we're also seeking to finance the acquisition and preliminary development costs with the bond funding. Mm -hmm. So uh, tax increment district and tax increment financing bonds, which the bond layer is in addition to what we did at 40th and Central. So that's the, the key difference. We, in that case, financed the EDA, the acquisition out of reserve development funds. It was slightly more manageable than, than this lift, not by much but um, kind of put all of our reserve funds into that to acquire, prepare for redevelopment and then sell the lattice. Here we're acting as lender um, on top of, and the sequencing, because we can get a lattice to acquire directly and the EDA slash city don't ever take title in this situation. Um, it was more palatable through those earlier conversations to borrow um, rather than put that um, cash at risk because we could we could have scraped it together, um, but then it would have severely limited our ability to do a lot of other things uh, while we waited for this to. And the cost of borrowing right now is probably gone down two hundred basis points since forty <laughs> and central. Yeah. yeah, so it's a much better option for us. Okay, thanks. 
Are there any other questions from anyone? Okay, um, if not, we'll move on to the motions. They're on page 56. Move the way, go ahead. Move the way the reading of resolution 2021-11, there being ample copies available to the public. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to waive the reading of the resolution. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Move to adopt resolution 2021-11, a resolution authorizing execution of a tax increment pledge agreement with the City of Columbia Heights relating to taxable general obligation temporary tax increment bonds series 2021-A to be issued in the estimated aggregate principal amount of $6 million. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the resolution. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I was going to abstain. But... Oh, do you want to? Yeah, do you want it in the record? Yeah, that... I, I to abstain, yeah. Okay, all right. So there would be one, two, three, four, five, six affirms, and Jerry is abstaining. Did I get the number right? Martha, do we need anything further with that for documentation at all? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. Perfect. Okay. Right. Back to the agenda. Um, hmm? um, well, it says public hearings, but we don't none. have yeah. none. And other business? None. Okay. Okay. I have a question of a lattice. We've been watching the construction, of course, because it's fun to do. Um, and we have wondered why so much space between the base of it and that first layer of, of concrete. I mean, you could put two layers of underground parking in there, and it seemed odd. Is this back? It's in toward the back. You haven't started anything. You're right. They haven't the started front. where the city hall is. Um, I'm just trying to. I actually just biked up there. Uh, yes, two more or on uh, Friday morning. I, so I live in the North Loop. So I actually just bike up there all the time and check out the construction site. Okay. It's pretty cool. Um, but I'm trying to. Okay, so back. So in the southeast corner. Okay, I'm standing and looking at the building. So yeah, like from. And it would be from 40th east. And the northeast, the northeast portion oh. is where this huge construction thing is now, but it looks like so much space. Oh, it's tall. Height. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the so the first the first parking deck um, is uh, probably 18 feet clear. So it is it is pretty tall. And inside of the, that huge space is where the parking deck is yeah so city hall needed to be tall. yeah so it's so city hall was tall and then there's also that change in the elevation okay. as you go from okay. central it will make more sense north. when you start that that construction where the city hall is going to be yep right? exactly so I, then, I have people asking me <laughs> what's going on <laughs> yeah so then you'll see a timeout but the other the other idea that was necessary was we wanted people to be able to um you know, pull off the street and bring in essentially a box truck. So it's not a, it's not for 18 wheelers, but like a larger U-Haul can actually pull in there mm -hmm. so that it makes that whole entryway right, clean. Now that makes and, sense. Cause we yeah. saw that, we saw that on the plants, but then when you see it for real, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ginormous. Well, there's also, there's a big empty space that hasn't been formed out where the, um, the HVAC uh, okay. frames okay. are and mm -hmm. it, it Basically, there was a big enough space to, to pop it in there, which was okay. perfect because it allowed for the ventilation, um, the vents that, that are needed for okay. air intake right. to be there. So, yeah, it's kind of... Now it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense, but that's No, it good. does. Yeah. I mean, I, it makes sense to me now because I was like, I don't remember seeing anything that huge. The, the floor below is more traditional yeah. parking garage height, the yeah. underground. Okay. My yeah. other question is with the... Um, lumber industry where they are right now yep. is this going to um delay or have you already stockpiled all year? we already locked that contract um, that's what we, i wanted to yeah do. we did that back in well i think for for about two months we had every other day calls um and i want to say we locked the contract in january mm -hmm. which 
we had no idea if that was going to be a good or a bad decision. It was a very good decision because it yes. actually has gone up 40% since then. So um, there was a change order, but we had already we had already baked that into all the costs of the project. So uh, yeah, so we, in terms of, del you know, actual deliveries, I typically- So what, I would what put them babies under lock and key because they're <laughs> yeah. gonna be worth a heck of a lot of money. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, that is true. And normally the, the framers will be buying contracts. So, you know, they're buying all of those futures contracts and okay. they don't necessarily even have it stored on site. Um, we haven't had a lot of material delays here in the Twin Cities. Okay. A lot of the like Southeast, Texas, kind of the smile states have had mm -hmm. a lot of issues with resource availability. We haven't had as much here. So okay. um, I'm That's hopeful. That's good to hear. Yeah, framing doesn't start till July. So mm -hmm. um, we should, is it July? I wanted to say June, but you- Yeah, I think it's- Would know more. There might be some framing going up towards the end of this month, but I want to say wow. it was July. Um, cause we hit, we've had about 16 rain, rain or cold days. Um, what, but actually this winter was really good, but yeah. So in July, we should see some framing going up and trusses and plywood and all that good stuff, but we don't have any exposure there. Anymore. Most of the wall sections are being built off site yep. right, and delivered as yep. panels to set with a crane. We kind of thought that's what those were under wraps. They were panels. Oh, wall just panels this. or something. I don't know what's they, out there. They're stored they on the Gould side and they're yep. wrapped in white plastic. Yeah, it could be, I don't know, I'd have to, I'd have to go up there. The wall or, or I don't know. floor panel? Sounds like you get out there quite a bit. <laughs> oh, we do because we live close by. So we make the route. We go come down <laughs> to the reservoir and then come down Gould because that's a great place you could stop right. and look. <laughs> I do get out there too. It's yeah. really fun to watch. <laughs> Fascinating, so, I enjoy that. We also is, have a camera. Um, that is that house sense. gone yet? Uh, yet? Nope, the house is still there. <laughs> Boy, after seeing the pictures from the inside, I would want to get. <laughs> What's the timeline on that? On that house? Huh? What's the timeline? We don't have it you fully. Oh. So we've got a contract for the clean out executed. We need to get demo bids going. Before somebody starts a fire. Or yeah. Something like that. Mitch, my, my uh, right hand guy, was leading that and we feel his uh, absence <laughs> so um, we'll pick it back up but we we need to get the demo uh bids okay out and then brought back that answered all my questions anybody else got so any questions? by the end of summer thank you would. this we is a have big deal if you, if you pushed it it would probably just fall in <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right if you bury it with a bunch of uh, i didn't actually know how close that was it's way close yeah i mean it's it's like if if something you know you push something out of the window it would end up you know very this is true. On 12 this feet is true. of concrete so wow okay. yes <laughs> well, you have the yeah all right <laughs> yeah, well, now that everybody's cool. questions have been answered and we've run through our agenda it is complete and so i'll ask for a motion to adjourn so moved. Second. motion has been made and seconded that we adjourn all those in favor all right, all right. opposed we adjourn. thank you you're welcome. Thanks.